cactus to shed their skin, so the rope's not going to deter him. <laughs> he is very active, knows he's in the open. He just wants to get away. Yeah. All right. So, so Blaine and, and, and Brian, mm -hmm. if you were to find this snake out in your yard, yeah. Uh, and let's say you're not familiar with snakes, you, you, you don't like to touch snakes, who could you call? Uh, which one of you fellas uh, knows a little bit about who do you call in the area? What you want to Blaine call does. is, uh, you can call the Bear County Sheriff's Department's non-emergent number 311. And our organization, we do rescues, and they will give you the phone number of one of our members who lives close to your area. And we come out at no charge and remove the snakes. And that's poisonous, or pardon me, venomous and non-venomous? Venomous and non-venomous. Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, the non-venomous, we take them out and release them. Uh, a lot of the venomous... Uh, are taken to special labs where we're doing cancer research with proteins from their venom. Excellent. Okay. So this is the, say the name again the of this black snake? Black-tailed rattlesnake. Black-tailed rattlesnake, common in the western parts of Bear County. Correct. And he is a long one. How long is this snake here? Uh, you know, I haven't measured her. I think she's probably about 42, maybe 43 inches. A little bit more than three feet. Now that seems right there. When they crook their neck like that, is that is that kind of a warning to you, or is that more Not of a concern really. on her part? Or no. they they have to move with that serpentine motion, so their body always you almost never see a snake perfectly straight. It always has a little bit of a bend to it. If uh, if you were to make this snake mad or get right in front of it, if it if it developed a, an aggressive posture, there would be much more of a coil effect in the neck. And it would look much more like it's, you know, getting getting ready to, you know, like right strike. there. Yeah. See, has he was coming back like that? Yeah. That's the that's the aggressive response. You can hear the rattle. Um, and it's a different rattle than the common Western Diamondback. Well, she's got small rattles on oh, her. Okay. If you had a, a big Western Diamondback with long rattles, you would hear it a lot louder. Because it sounds almost like a bug. Yeah. Right now, she. Because they're fragile, she had broken about half her rattles off in the cage just by hitting the side of the cage. That's how fragile the rattles are. But that that's that's that look right there is more of a of a of a getting close to being a striking striking position. You know, the snake sort of it looks it feels uh, like it is starting to take an aggressive response because it's looked and there there's a human on either side of it and it doesn't know which way that it needs to go to escape. But uh, I guarantee you, the first. It wants to escape by far more than it wants to bite you. Now, what in the world? That looks like a cottonmouth moccasin. This is exactly. It's a cottonmouth, also called a water moccasin. These are a heavy-bodied snake that like to be found around water and damp areas where their main diet is fish and frogs and birds. They'll eat rodents. Uh, in Bear County, you can find them in Leon Creek, Salado Creek. You can find them in the San Antonio River. Uh, Medina River, and they're found, the, the cottonmouth is found from North Carolina, Virginia, all the way into West Texas, as far west. The band on the junction. side of the snake indicates what? The dark band that goes the length of the head is on the cottonmouth. Your water snakes do not have that broad black band that goes from behind the eye to the back of the head. This snake also, when it swims, you'll see its whole body on top of the water. Where your non-venomous water snakes, you'll see just their head and a short portion of their body. If cornered, they will coil up, they'll vibrate their tail, they'll throw their head back open their mouth and expose their fangs as a threatening pose to scare you away. But like any other snake, most of the times these snakes are going to try and get away from you. Why do people refer to them as cottonmouths? Uh, because the inside of their mouth is white, but most of your snake's mouths are white. But because they typically open their mouth and expose it, they got the name of cottonmouth. Also, these snakes, that once they once they reach adult size, which this is an adult, it's a large, it's a good size adult. Uh, they usually get very very dark, almost a black coloration. Uh, when they're young, they have much more pronounced pattern, and a lot of times these. Uh, uh, Copperhead and the cottonmouth is in the genus Echistrodon, and they'll have a bright, like almost a fluorescent yellow tail. And what the tail does, it's it's actually a lure, just like they're fishing, but they're fishing for frogs and and other other things that want to come up, or, or maybe a small mouse. You know, so they'll sit there and they'll wiggle their tail right in front of their mouth, and they'll just sit and wait for something to come up and attack that little 
worm or whatever they think it is. And as soon as that uh, prey item comes, the snake uh, bites the prey item and and it's it's a way for them to sort of catch food more easily. Copperhead is the only copperhead in Bear County. Uh, this is an adult and as you can see it blends in really well with the grass and especially the dry leaves. You find copperheads a lot around uh, oak leaves. Uh, Very quick. And, and yeah. brush. Uh, amazingly for a viper, its main diet is insects and frogs. Mm. They love cicadas, hornworms, caterpillars, leopard frogs. You find them in damp areas with a lot of oak leaves. They will feed on small rodents. Uh, fortunately, the bite of the copperhead is very painful, but deaths are yeah, very uh, rare. We've seen a few of these on Camp Bullis. I, I, I never saw them very often in the hill country until I came here. I'm not quite sure if it's just uh, uh, when I when I was doing natural resources work on Camp Bullis, I was out in the woods more often, or, or maybe we're just have a slightly different uh, soil makeup. But they but they are here on Camp Bullis. In fact, we find these. Probably we find one copperhead for every two or three rattlesnakes that we find. So they, they are relatively common. However, in other parts of the hill country, I have never seen one. Basically, in the hill country, outside of Camp Bullis, I have never Probably seen the it. most common venomous snake in Bear County. They're in your yards. They hide under the mulch and the leaf litter for two reasons. One, they need to keep their skin moist. The other reason is under your the leaf litter in your yards, you're finding these little bitty brown snakes that look like worms. They're called rough earth snakes. That's the main diet of the coral. You look snake. at the colors: red, yellow, and black. Red touch yellow, kill a fellow. Red touch black. The other thing you can black. see when it moves. See how it moves in a real jerky pattern? Yeah. That, that that's very characteristic of the coral snakes. Now, it, it's hard to confuse this snake with any other type of snake. Really, it's it's uh, the coloration is just it stands out so much. Uh, it has that uh, red, yellow, and black coloration. Uh, th th they don't get very large. They're always very slender. They are very quick, uh, and they they can go down the smallest little hole, and they will get away from you. That's what I'm looking for, any holes yeah. in the rock. <laughs> Chances are y you have these in and around your home and or your property. Tails that their mouth is so small. There's a wife's tail. Their mouth is so small they have to bite you between your fingers in order to uh, find a, sm pe a piece of skin small enough to chew on. Uh, that is 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 not true. They can bite you really anywhere, but they do have really, to chew if for a, a If a bit. snake ever bites you, get it off, especially a coral snake. If a snake ever bites you, just yank it off, get it off of you wow, as fast as possible. We saw some incredible snakes. Uh, Brian and Blaine, I want to thank you so much for educating not only myself uh, and my cameraman, but also everybody at Joint Base San Antonio because at the end of the day, I think, and, and the folks training out here at Camp Bullis, I think we just want people Fine. to be safe. Again, see a snake, leave it alone. Uh, as far as snake bite goes, just head nearest hospital, dial 911. Uh, wash it with soap and water. Keep it at the level of the heart or slightly below. Do not attempt to catch or kill that snake and take it to the hospital with you. The medical personnel around here are trained to recognize a venomous snake bite. Snake bites are, are extremely painful from venomous animals. They're gonna be extremely painful. Um, you will know you got bitten by a rattlesnake. If you get bit by one of those rat snakes or the coach whip or the king snake, you know, you, there'll be a little bit of blood where it bites you, but, but not pain. Um, a cat scratch is, is much more painful than, than being bit by a non-venomous snake. Uh, I've always heard it said, I've never been bitten by a venomous animal and I don't care to be, but I've heard that uh, it's like having a lighter held underneath your skin and just, just stay there. So it feels like liquid fire going to your, going into your skin. Uh, get to the hospital. They know how to take care of you there. Uh, that would be my Excellent. closing. Well, statement. again, thank you, Brian, so much for having us out today. Yeah. We've had a really good time. Yeah, we have. Hey, uh, everybody! Thanks for watching. We hope you uh, stay tuned because the next video we're going to come out with is going to be about this building that you can't see, but Brian and his associates know a lot about. It's called the Shale House, the original ranch that sits here on Campbell. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.